Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. We're going to talk about sugar today, everybody's favorite subject, because we're all pretty much addicted to it. There's a lot of different problems with sugar and, and things that I want you to understand. I'm sure all of you know at least one or two people who have gone off sugar cold turkey. They're doing great. Their vitality, their energy, everything is better. Their skin is better, everything. But it's not easy to do that because there is sugar in every single thing that we eat practically. So it's hard to say I'm going to go completely off of sugar. But let me break down a few things and help you to understand what sugar is exactly and why processed sugar is so dangerous for our health. First of all, there's two basic types of sugar. There's fructose. That comes from fruits. It's a naturally occurring sugar found in fruit. Then we have sucrose, which is found in sugar beets or sugar cane. And if we were to just eat the sugar beet or the sugar cane, that would be fine. But then we process it, and it's in that processing part that makes it dangerous to our health. But let's go back to fructose for a minute. Everyone says, and a lot of doctors I've heard say this, oh, fructose and uh, sucrose are the same, the body uses them the same, the body recognizes them as the same. That's not true. First of all, their chemical structure is totally different. They enter the body differently, and the body uses them differently. Now, you don't want to have too much fructose found in fruit because that can be bad too. I'm sure everyone knows who Steve, Steve Jobs is, and he died of pancreatic cancer. He was also a fruitarian, meaning that he ate large quantities of fruit. And it's been suggested that perhaps the amount of fruit that he ate could have caused or aggravated his cancer. I don't know. Then we have su uh, fruit, uh, I'm sorry, sucrose, which as I mentioned, it's from <clears throat> the sugar beet or the sugar cane, but it's mainly processed today from the sugar cane, which is genetically modified. That genetically modified process makes it even more dangerous. Why? Because then it's made into what's called high fructose corn syrup. You can see this on the labels of many, many things. Anything that has, that's candy, anything that's a bread, a pie, a cake, a pastry, um, definitely sodas, they all have on the label high fructose corn syrup. Now, it, now the genetically modified industry is trying to disguise that in some ways and they put corn syrup on it, but it's the same thing. It does not go into your body the same way. It doesn't get processed the same way. In fact, your body does not recognize it as a sugar at all. It recognizes it as a fat and it tells the liver store it someplace. So that's why it causes, you know, the genetically modified process doesn't help, and the fact that they're actually processing the sugar beet and the sugar, sugar cane does not help. And then when we're addicted to it and we're eating it every single day in large quantities, then it causes more issues. All right, there's a couple of books. First of all, there's a book called Sugar Blues. This is an interesting book. You may want to get it. You may want to read it. <clears throat> One thing that I remember in there, they talk about a story that, People would go out and they would eat sugar beets or sugar cane in particular every single day. They never got anything associated with high, high sugar content in their bodies such as diabetes or, or high insulin and so forth. And so they know that it's in the processing part that really causes the problems. There's also a book called Lick the Sugar Hab Habit by um, <clears throat> her, uh, Nancy Appleton. If you want to get that book, she goes into 75 different reasons and backs it up with research of why we should not be eating sugar. I'm going to highlight just a few of these, and I do have a blog on this as well. First of all, the big thing is, is sugar can suppress your immune system. Now, your immune system is extraordinarily important. Obviously, it keeps you well. So ask yourself, do I or any of my kids, do we get colds a lot? Do we get sick a lot? Do we get the flu? Do we get sore throats? You know, go through a bunch of things. Sometimes in families, it seems like kids are always sick. Are they eating too much sugar? Are you eating too much sugar? Because if so, it's causing problems and havoc with your immune system. It can also cause problems with your skin. All right, it causes what's called... Um, <clears throat> premature cross-linking of the collagen and the elastin. Okay, collagen and elastin fibers <clears throat> are horizontal. Okay, and so what happens is if you're eating too much sugar, you can get knots in them, all right? And when that knot hits your skin, you're gonna get a wrinkle. 
it also prematurely ages the skin to begin with so you can get premature aging. Now, if you have other skin conditions like eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis, if you're eating high quantities of sugar, or your children are, this will aggravate those conditions. <clears throat> it can cause a rapid rise of adrenaline and hyperactivity, anxiety, crankiness, and moodiness with children. Look at your kids. Are they cranky? Are they moody? Are they cranky? Are they moody because they need some protein in their diet or they need to exercise or they need to get away from those video games? You can ask yourself that first, but look at diet. Diet is always important. Are they getting too much sugar, which is causing their mood swings, which is causing their crankiness, which is causing their lack of ability to be able to concentrate on their homework. It can also feed cancer cells. There's a number of different cancer uh, forms of cancer that they do know that sugar can actually aggravate it, such as breast, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, rectum cancer, and pancreatic cancer. <clears throat> it can weaken your eyesight. It can cause problems with your gastrointestinal system. 97% of the problems that people rush into emergency rooms of the hospital for, they all pertain to some form of digestive issues. Look to see if you're consuming too much sugar. Another thing that it can cause, it can actually exacerbate constipation because it pulls water out of the system. Water is important for our, that entire process of going to the bathroom on a regular basis. Water is needed. It can also cause, and it's directly related to type 2 diabetes. It can cause insulin sensitivity. And the list goes on and on. Let me leave you with a bonus fact, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard this. When we talk about wanting to go off of sugar, or at least curbing our sugar, they now have said that sugar addiction is eight times more powerful than cocaine addiction. So start in baby steps. Get rid of the sodas. Get rid of the candy bars. Get rid of all the pastries. You can start there. Uh, substitute something that is high in protein or is high in fat, particularly something like coconut oil or cod liver oil or uh, olive oil. All of those are high in fat and they're good fats and they help to suppress any type of hunger pains that you may have. And a pro of course protein as well. The protein found in eggs for instance is an amazing, amazing protein, not only for your body but for your brain and for your children's brains. Good luck with this. I know it's not easy. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.